It's been about a month since I started experimenting with a carnivore diet and I just uh, recently did some blood tests and I'm gonna talk about them in this uh, video briefly. Uh, so I'm gonna compare these results with the last blood test that I had which uh, was uh, about a year ago and back then I was following a um, low carbohydrate non-ketogenic diet and I was consuming around uh, maybe up to 150 grams of carbohydrates per day, sometimes even more, so I was not in ketosis. And I gotta say that back then I was consuming a lot of plant foods, I was eating maybe three or four pounds of uh, vegetables a day and I had a lot of variety in those vegetables and uh, legumes and greens. So I was eating like maybe from uh, 12 or uh, 15 different plants every day. I was also consuming, so it was like an omnivore diet, so I was eating, uh, I was also eating eggs and dairy, and I was eating meat, but I wasn't eating a lot of meat. So, yeah, uh, and before that, before that, I was actually doing a uh, ketogenic diet probably since 2013, so I was strict on a ketogenic diet. Uh, for two or three years then I went and experimented with a low carbohydrate diet and uh, then um, I returned to the ketogenic diet back in um, back last December so in December 2017 uh, I became strict ketotic and um, how do I know that uh, well it's because I've been measuring my blood glucose and blood ketones every day since December 2017 so I've been strict on a ketogenic diet since December 2017 and a couple of weeks ago I started experimenting with the carnivore diet okay so um, probably the one strategy that I uh, uh, kept following all this time with all the diets was intermittent fasting so all throughout the years ever since 2014 late 2013, um, I started doing um, intermittent fasting at least 16 hours a day. Okay, so now that we have the context covered, I'm going to uh, start with the blood tests. So the first is LDL. So last year while, while I was on the, um, on the low carbohydrate non-ketogenic diet, my LDL was um, 108, so I'm going to read from, I, I have them written down here. Uh, so my LDL was 108, and uh, now my LDL is 181. Okay, so obviously, while you are on a ketogenic diet or on a carnivore diet, when you consume a lot of uh, animal foods, uh, your LDL goes... Uh, goes higher so it's obvious that my LDL kind of went higher from 108 to 181 but this is LDL cholesterol and uh, I'm not worried about this uh, if I would have the budget I would probably measure LDL P or small LDL P the particle size and that would be much more relevant uh, in terms of saying if there is any cardiovascular risk associated with uh, with the thing that I'm doing. So LDLC, LDL cholesterol, of course, it goes higher. It's not relevant. It's still not that high, 181. Uh, and I'm not worried about th this uh, because my um, HDL, so my HDL cholesterol is high. So last year it was 85 and now is 96 milligrams per deciliter. So that's a very healthy level of uh, HDL cholesterol. Okay, so um, next are the triglycerides. So um, my triglycerides were never higher, especially when I was following the ketogenic diet uh, a couple of years ago. It was uh, always like 40 something, so it was relatively low. Last year when I was uh, starting to eat more carbohydrates, it went to 68, probably one of the highest levels I've measured. But now it's 37, so my triglycerides are 37 milligrams per deciliter, which is really, really low, uh, meaning that I'm uh, using them, uh, that my body burns fat uh, 
appropriately, if I can put it that way. Okay, now my total cholesterol. So um, I actually calculated my total cholesterol because I didn't want to pay uh, for uh, the test because they actually calculate it as well. So I can just calculate it myself and not pay the money. So the formula for total cholesterol is HDL plus LDL plus triglycerides over five. And my total cholesterol now is 284. Last year it was 201. My cholesterol, uh, while I was on the ketogenic diet a couple of years ago and I kept measuring it, was always around 260, 280, 290. That's that. And there were times when I paid for it. So um, it was never higher than 290 at most. Okay, now another thing that I measured is highly sensitive C-reactive protein. Last year, my HSCRP was 0.012 milligrams per deciliter, which is extremely low. Uh, the reference range for healthy people is, uh, so you'd have to have the HSCRP below 0.5. So mine last year was 0.012 and this year is 0.048. So my HSCRP is 0.048 milligrams per deciliter, which is really, really low, about 10 times as low than uh, the reference range. So um, that's that very low, highly sensitive C-reactive protein, which which is a marker of inflammation. Um, okay, now HbA1c, so hemoglobin A1c, or glycated hemoglobin. Last year was 5.5%, good range. Now it's 5.1%. Okay, so, um, I guess there are no issues here. Uh, so uh, HbA1c or circulating blood glucose levels over a period of three months um, uh, are 5.1 percent, which is really good. Um, besides measuring HbA1c, I also, like I said, I also measured my blood glucose and uh, blood ketones every day since December 2017, so I can compare that. And uh, I usually test once or twice a day. And when I'm in the fasted state, my blood glucose levels, levels are in the 70s. And when I measure on a fast state, let's say maybe one to two hours after a meal, um, the blood glucose is in the 80s, 83, 85. There have been just a couple of times uh, during this year um, of measuring uh, when they were uh, 90 something and once it was only once when it was probably uh, 100 100 probably 100 was the highest but it was uh, around uh, when i had more carbohydrates about i don't know how many grams but uh, it was like some sort of a cheat day not necessarily carbohydrates that would keep me out of ketosis but carbohydrates plus plus higher calories okay so that was plus high protein of course so um that was it now probably one um one marker that was uh i was really pleased to see was the total T3. So this is the circulating triiodothyronine, which is the active thyroid hormone. Now, when I was on a ketogenic diet, I almost always, not almost, but always, I always measured my total T3 and was below the normal range, which was normal because uh, on my ketogenic diet, I was doing moderate protein because I wanted to keep my ketones higher. So, um, uh, while uh, the, the total T3 is correlated with a carbohydrate and with also uh, with carbohydrate intake and also with caloric intake. So, my total, total T3 while on a ketogenic diet was uh, 
always below the normal range, but my other thyroid markers that I measured were always in the normal range. So I wasn't concerned. It was obvious that my T3 would be below the, norm the normal range. Plus I think uh, that while I was still on the ketogenic diet, I also consumed some uh, goitrogenic foods like cabbage and all that stuff. And they might have some impact, might have had some impact on, um, on the total T3 or on my thyroid output. Plus, this was also influenced by the fact that I was fasting, which also correlates with T3. Plus, I was eating moderate protein. So, um, yeah, all of that. And um, But uh, one symptom that I had with the total T3 being below normal was the cold feet and hands. Other than that, things seemed normal. So, yeah, uh, last year while I... Uh, consumed more carbohydrates and I was non-ketogenic my T3 was 0.71 and so that was kind of borderline normal and now it's 0.83 which is in the normal range so since I've uh, started doing a carnivore diet my active thyroid hormone returned to normal range which is really good so 0.83 nanograms per milliliter Probably uh, one of the uh, biggest surprises uh, in my biomarkers was the testosterone. So last year, uh, my testosterone wa while I was on a low carbohydrate, non-ketogenic diet was, so the last time I measured it was probably one of the lowest measures, was 323 nanograms per deciliter. So that was one of the lowest measures that I had. Uh, while I was on a ketogenic diet, my testosterone measured anywhere between 600 to 800 nanograms per milliliter, somewhere in that, which is well within the normal range, probably higher normal range. Well now, so the testosterone went from 323 last year to 1165 nanograms per deciliter which is on top of the normal range, probably higher. I guess it's, it's higher than the normal range. While <laughs> the only S vitamin that I'm consuming is called beef, if you know what I'm talking about. So my testosterone is sky high on the carnivore diet, which uh, makes me really happy. Um, well, um, so these are the blood tests. If I would have the budget, I would actually probably measure a lot more stuff, but I don't know, maybe sometimes in the future. If I'm going to keep uh, experimenting with the carnivore diet, it is very likely that I'm, uh, I'm going to do more blood tests to actually, to actually see how they, uh, how they compare across time. Okay, so I guess this is it for this video. These are my uh, blood tests one month into the carnivore diet, into a type of carnivore diet that I'm doing. Um, so I should probably be uh, more specific about my carnivore diet, but that's probably uh, the topic for another video. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.